Hi everyone, I'm Sarah Bauman and I wrote a book called The Light in the Lake about a girl named Addie who loves science and magic. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the moment I decided to write this story and then I want to read aloud the prologue, which is the very beginning of the book. Afterwards, I'll give you an idea for how you can use your inspiration to write or draw. Here's how this story began. I tend to do my best thinking when I'm outside. And one spring day, I was walking with my dog in the woods behind our house in Vermont. I was looking at the mountains and thinking about something I'd recently learned about them. At one point in history, they were much taller. Glaciers altered their shape over time and made them softer and rounder. It was interesting for me to realize this because I always thought of mountains as being very solid, but it turned out they had changed. And all of a sudden, this sentence came to me in Addie's voice. Mama says people who think mountains don't move are taking the short view of things. I didn't know who this character was yet, but I knew her voice. And as I walked and thought and wondered, I started working out the details for the rest of the story. By the time I got home, I was ready to start writing. Now that was only the beginning. I didn't head back into my house and write the whole book then and there. In fact, writing was not always easy. I had to change the book a lot, just like all authors do. But one fun fact, that first sentence I heard in the woods never changed. So what I want you to remember is that all books start small. One sentence is all you need. Here is the prologue of The Light in the Lake. You already know the first sentence. Mama says people who think mountains don't move are taking the short view of things. They've been moving, she says, all this time. Doesn't matter that we can't see it. If we could somehow watch time go faster, I think. Or if we'd lived so long we'd felt the glaciers haul through here in the first place, we would see it, and then we'd know. In science class, we learn that millions of years ago, our mountains used to stretch up higher than clouds. Sometimes I look at them for so long, I think I can see how they used to be. Before my eyes, the rounded green tops rise, sharper than they are now, poking the sky. Then I blink and they settle into place. In those moments, it feels like everything around me, maple lakes tossing waves, the sighing wind, is slowly breathing in and out but I'm only seeing what I know was once there, what Mama and my science textbook told me. Amos saw something else, and he wanted me to see it too. He loved floating in the lake, surrounded by mountains thick with mossy rocks and tangled cedars. The waves whispered secrets, he said. We just had to listen. He was so certain something lived in that cold water, something ancient and huge and shining. You have to look, he'd say, standing on the beach. Look, Addie. But when I'd squint at the water, at the glowing shape he insisted swelled in the middle, I'd shake my head. A log, I'd say. That's all. It's not that I didn't see the shining, or that I loved the lake any less than he did. I'm the most myself when I'm near the water. It's just that I had my way to look at the world, and he had his. People say we look so much alike, fraternal twins with the same leaf green eyes and bony knees, same hair, the color of sand and just as wind whipped and rough. But what they don't say, because they can't see, is that underneath the eyes and hair and skin and bone, something stronger pulls us close. One side of his heart makes the other side of mine. And here because he is, and the other way around, for always. Things that solid aren't supposed to go away, but sometimes they do. Glacier ice cut through those mountains and pressed down until the hard, sharp rock chipped clean away. And when the weather warmed and the ice went soft, then clear, it left us with Maple Lake, the deepest one in Vermont. Dad says lake water runs through our veins and maybe that's true. When Amos and I aren't swimming with Mama, we're casting lines with Dad, hoping for some of that trout and smelt and perch we fish for all year long. Fished, I mean. The spring, Amos tumbled into the lake and slept, down there on the bottom, where the stone that used to be mountain now lies flat and unseen. 
Now, I have to say everything in past tense. Mama doesn't talk about the mountains anymore. She doesn't talk much at all. You want to go skip stones, Mama? I ask sometimes when I'm feeling brave. We could throw mountain back to mountain, watch pieces skid across the water. But even now, she can barely look at me when she says no. That's the very beginning of the light in the lake. So how can you get started with a story? Can you go outside and find a little piece of inspiration that you can bring back with you? One sentence that can start all the other ones? I have a prompt for you. I'd like you to take a walk outside your house. Or if you can't go out on a walk, look outside the window. What do you see that fills you with a sense of wonder? It can be a part of nature, a tree, a rock, the sky, but it doesn't have to be. It could also be an impressively tall building or a statue or anything else that catches your eye and your heart. And start with a sentence that suggests there's more to that thing that you see than most people realize. You could even take the sentence from the prologue and use that format. People who think something is a certain way are taking the short view of things. Describe that thing you see. Share some facts about it. Narrate a story about it and see what happens. If you're an artist, take a look at the cover of The Light in the Lake. It really captures the beauty and the mystery of Maple Lake and Addie's eyes focus on that golden light in the water. Try using colors to draw your viewer's focus to an important part of your artwork. Have fun and thanks so much for listening to The Light in the Lake. Bye-bye.